do allow me to ask you this, ladies and gentlemen. Are you a content creator wanting to up your micro four thirds camera game, but feel like you shouldn't need to rob a bank or enter the squid game for that matter? Don't do it, it's a bad idea. Just to upgrade your kit lens. Now, what if I told you that there exists one such lens that not only is priced right, but seems like it's almost designed specifically for vlogging. Yet it's still a beast, it's still photography if you need it. With fantastic imagery, light and small in size that your arms will thank you for, versatility, and has a nearly all metal construction. Well then, consider this. The Lumix G Leica DG Sumilux 15mm f1.7 S spherical lens. I love this lens so much that I bought one for myself. And if you're curious what this Leica can do for you, please watch the rest of this video. Let's do it after these messages and don't forget to subscribe and like this video that way. All right, first up, let's talk about the specs and then we'll take a close up look at the lens itself for those who like that kind of stuff. If you just wanna skip ahead to what I think about it, the pros and cons, feel free to use the quick links down below. But anyways, this lens, even though it came out like what, seven years ago, way back in March 2014, if I remember correctly, it will still set you back $550 for the US model. It rarely goes on discount. Uh, but if you don't mind skipping the warranty altogether, you can get this for 450 for the international Japan model, which is this one. And I'll link them both down below in case you're interested. Now, for the price, you're getting many good things. It sports Leica optics. That's probably sits so right at the top here at f1.7. It's not the lowest, but when you combine this with the 15 millimeter uh, focal length, it's a very nice balance, at least for me, for vlogging. And I'll explain why later on. By the way, this 15 is very uncommon. Usually you get 18 or 25 or something like that millimeter focal length. There's a dedicated aperture a ring right here. You hear that? Really nice positive click feel from automatic and f1.7 all the way to 16. Really nice, your fingers fall right in place. It's wide enough. Uh, but it only works for our Panasonic cameras, by the way. In other cameras, like say an Olympus, you'll be using your command dial instead. And note that this is a prime lens technically. So in order to zoom in and out, you need to rely on what you call your feet. Remember that or move your tripod altogether. And in case you're wondering, the closest focusing distance is 0.2 meters. That's about half a foot. That's pretty darn impressive for this kind of lens and for what it does. There's a smooth focusing ring right here. My fingers can slide in and out like this right now, really nicely, but it's continuous. There's no beginning or end stop. Some of you may or may not like that. There's a physical autofocus, manual focus switch right here with re just the right amount of stiffness. You, it's hard to accidentally bump this with your finger or gear in your gear bag. Really, it will be impossible to do it in my opinion. Uh, and this thing is mostly metal. The only plastic I can find here is right here in the contact plate. But the back plate right here and everything is metal. Even the lens hood that comes with it is metal. Wow, I really like this. For the price, this thing is well built. But the weight also is decently light. That's like 112 grams just for the lens itself. With the lens hood, that's 132. Uh, and by the way, in terms of glass, there's nine elements in seven groups. That's pretty impressive for something this compact. So would you like your face or your product or your scene to stand out a little bit more? Well, this lens will send it for you all the way each time, guys, because image quality on this thing, I'm so in love with it. It's detailed and clean and very predictable. And it's impressively sharp, even at wide open at f1.7, which is usually not the case at this price range. Although, as you can see from the sample here, there is some softness in the outer perimeter, like in the fibers of the mic on the right and the text on the left. It's not bad, but it's there, and I thought I'd mention it anyway. And this is fully corrected by the time I reach f4.0 and beyond. Now, one other thing I also like is the bokeh deliciousness that this thing produces. It's really nice and natural compared to a cell phone, and it gives me goosebumps. Oh my goodness, it looks so good on a big screen. And I mean, just look at this sample right here. The background, it gently fades away to like blurry discs of diffuse soap bubble-like elements, almost like an Enya music video or something. And I also found low light performance to be a highlight here. It pulls in quite a lot of light, and when you combine it with the sharpness of the glass, it produces less noise and also loss of detail. And here's a sample comparing my G85 with its pretty awesome kit lens to begin with, and that's what I'm shooting this video segment with, in fact, mounted on a tripod versus this Sumilux and my Pixel side by side just for fun. And of course, the, win <laughs> the phone wins because of the Google wizardry. And by the way, check out this photo as well. And note, there is some barrel distortion. It's not jarring or distracting, but it's there. And in this case, it's more pronounced towards the right side of the frame for some reason. 
After testing out quite a few lenses out there that were within my budget, of course, I finally settled on this 15mm focal length because ultimately I found that this is almost a sweet spot for vlogging and street photography combined, in my opinion. Because too small, it would have been all fishbowly, if you know what I'm talking about. And any larger, especially handheld, all your audience would have been seeing is some huge talking head. If you currently have your camera on some kind of selfie stick or a handheld tripod like this, then you know how quickly your arms tire out, right? Especially if you have some kind of giant honking full frame camera with a regular size lens, for example, or heck, even a micro four thirds with a large-ish kit lens like this one. It's like a workout, right? And yeah, this may not be a true pancake, but you'll definitely appreciate its compactness, its packability, and also closer center of gravity to the camera body. I mentioned this earlier in the close-ups, the build and materials on this thing is really tight and solid, it's really well made and it makes handling that much better than the cheaper alternatives out there. I tried out the 20mm f1.7 and the 14mm f2.5 pancakes, both Lumixes, both plastic builds and really nice lenses in their own right. But this metal barrel thing right here, it feels like I can drop it from like 10 stories up and it'll keep on ticking. One of my favorite bits on this device is the clickety aperture ring right here at the front. It's not only convenient, but having this also frees up your camera's quick dial for other functions, which means for you, more control, more customization, more power. Insert dramatic sound effect right here. And oh yes, there is another size related reason why I chose this over a pancake lens. So I have what they call a parrot pad caster for teleprompting. I slide this over on top or screw this onto the barrel of the lens itself. And so with any kind of shorter pancake lens, this slider right here for the phone mount would not open. It clashes with the camera base plate. But I have no such problem with the 15mm. This next one, I'm gonna put it in the neutral territory because some of you may or may not prefer this infinity focusing ring that has like no bump stops, you know, how it continuously spins like this. It doesn't really bother me since I rely on focus peaking or touch focus to frame what I need. I believe that the $500 price of entry can be steep for some because some of you out there probably bought your whole vlogging kit, your whole setup for $500 and to buy a lens, just this tiny little thing can be like sticker shock. And yes, I know, lenses are inherently expensive, especially if you're moving up, unless you're talking about the budget offerings from China. And really though, comparatively, this Lumix G lens is a fantastic price. But if you're moving up from a kit lens, which is like free, like I just did, 500 bucks can be tough to swallow. I understand. While vignetting is great for placing visual focus on the main subject in the middle of the image, like right now, I prefer to control this in post editing. But this lens has some of that in the corners. It has visible vignetting all the way up to f2.5, just a little bit, after which it goes away quite quickly. And it's common in lenses like this, just so you know, but it's still something to bear in mind. My Panasonic G85 and its kit lens, in case you're wondering, are both weather sealed. This is not. But that being said, it has survived the occasional sprinkles and light splashes from my infamous and patented splash tests. Remember those? But if you're out in the open or in the woods somewhere taking pictures of, I don't know, mushrooms or chipmunks having sex, and you see a rainstorm coming like it is right now, you better run guys, you better run. And it's kind of ironic, this thing can survive a 10 story drop or a tank rolling over it, but it will die the moment you spit on it. For the price you pay for, it would have been nice to see some kind of power OIS or optical image stabilization built into the lens so I can use continuous autofocusing. And to add to that, Panasonic, if you're watching this, it's about time we see version 2.0 of this lens and maybe include some improvements like power OIS, weather sealing, and active noise cancellation. Just seeing if you're paying attention there. But anyways, my camera, the G85, already has pretty solid in-body stape, so not having OIS on the lens is not that big of a deal. But just for kicks though, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison and you can decide for yourself which you prefer. If there is one word to describe this thing, it's versatile. And the other word would also be 
Dang, because yes, dang. I'm constantly blown away, guys, by the images and videos that this thing produces. They're so sharp, so smooth. And the fact that you can capture them in almost any situation or scene, thanks in part to the fast glass and also the short focal length. I'll tell you what, using this Leica branded glass is such a delight, guys, and I can't not recommend it wholeheartedly as long as you can swing the price. But on the other hand, don't get it if you want something more compact and don't need a shorter focal length uh, or want something cheaper. And some alternatives that I was able to uh, test out are like the Yang Nuo. Have you heard of them? They're out of China, but they're up and coming. Yang Nuo YN 42.5 millimeter F1.7 Series 2. Get the Series 2 autofocus prime lens. It's 138 bucks. It has good optics, cheap build, and it's a little bit noisy when focusing, so not great when your mic is nearby. The other one is a $268 Panasonic Lumix G2 lens, 20mm f1.7 as spherical. This one was one of my finalists, but it has fantastic imagery and half the size, but for vlogging, my head was still too close when I handheld it. So with all that being said, I'm gonna give the Lumix G Leica DG Sumilux 15mm f1.7 a gear up score of 8.6 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get a final score. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment down below. Well, that's it for this review. And this is actually my first time talking about camera lenses. So I hope you liked it. You can comment down below. Let me know what you think or how I can improve. And if you found this video the least bit interesting, guys, please smack the subscribe button down below like it's been naughty. Show your support. And turn on the bell notification icon to get notified whenever I drop new content. That's like two videos per week. Help me also to get to 50,000 subs, guys. So sub and share this with people, you know, like right now. Click the share button too. I'm also on Patreon if you like to, you know, support this channel financially you can do so like these two guys up here and also remember to thumbs up if you like this video and comment nicely down below and i'll see you guys the next time remember to do something kind and loving for somebody in this world because the world needs it more than ever and it starts with you peace out i love y'all